This week, the House votes to restrict refugee intake. Spain increases soccer stadium security measures. And Adele releases her first album in nearly five years. I'm Adina Marks. And I'm Maverick Ryan. ATV News starts now. The U.S. House of Representatives voted Thursday to require new regulations for Syrian and Iraqi re refugees coming into the U.S. The vote came to 289 to 137, which overrides the president's threat of a veto. 47 Democrats voted for the bill. French President Francois Hollande said Thursday that France will still be accepting 30,000 refugees over the next two years. This past week, South Korea accepted North Korea's offer to speak collaboratively on hashing out recent peace agreements. The talks will be the first of their kind since August when the two nations agreed to de-escalate tensions. The talks are set for this Thursday and are expected to be a precursor to higher level talks set to occur at a later date. Now bringing us the latest in entertainment news, we have Casey Wexler. I'm Casey Wexler, bringing you your entertainment report. There are some exciting releases this month in theaters, including Pixar's The Good Dinosaur on November 25th and the final installment of the Hunger Games series this past Friday, Mockingjay Part 2. In a review from the New York Times, protagonist Katniss Everdeen is praised for her progressive character development. Unlike a lot of screen heroines, the review says, she has never settled into a stereotype, which despite the whole dystopian thing, makes her a lot like the contemporary girls and women watching her. In music news, Adele's newest album, 25, is not available for streaming on services such as Spotify or Apple Music, the fo following the example of Taylor Swift's latest album, 1989. Industry insiders predict the album will sell 3.5 million copies worldwide in its first seven days on sale. Also, in album releases, get ready for Coldplay's seventh studio album, A Head Full of Dreams, which will hit the market on December 4th. That's all for entertainment news. I'm Casey Wexler. Thanks, Casey. A burned firefighter was given a new chance this week. Patrick Hardison, a former volunteer fire firefighter, 40 miles south of Memphis, was given a face transplant on August 14th. This was announced in a, pre in a press conference Monday. Hardison had lost his eyelids, ears, lips, and most of his nose in a fire in 2001. The transplant is the most extensive face transplant to date. On Friday morning, Washington State Governor Jay Inslee penned an op-ed in the New York Times on why his state won't shut its doors to Syrian refugees. Inslee was one of the first state leaders to openly affirm the U.S. decision to accept refugees, and he's cited in his opinion piece as saying the American character is being tested. Will we hew to our long tradition of being a beacon of hope for those chased from their homelands? The AU Student Government Jobs Board was taken down Wednesday after concerns that fake postings were leading students into danger. The student government secretary said that the board would be back in place by the end of fall semester or the beginning of spring semester. In the meantime, uh, student government is working with student activities in the Career Center to create a safer system. Next, we turn to Deepak, Deepak Bhagat with sports. Thanks, Adina. The women's basketball team will be playing Wake Forest after Thanksgiving break in a home match on Sunday, November 29th at 2 p.m. The women's volleyball team dominated the All-Patriot League awards ceremony, taking home five titles, including Player of the Year, Rookie of the Year, and Coach of the Year. The men's soccer team lost to Lehigh 2-1 to one in the Patriot League championship, but are still hopeful that they can make it into the NCAA tournament. The team is currently in the NCAA Top 10 in goals scored this season. In DC news, Nationals player Bryce Harper was named the National League MVP after leading the league in runs scored in on-base percentage. That's all for sports this week. I'm Deepak Bhagat. Back to you, Maverick. Thanks, Deepak. Security has been stepped up for El Clasico, the traditional matchup between Real Madrid and FC Barcelona. El Clasico is considered to be one of the biggest European soccer matches of the year. And in, in accordance with the attacks in Paris, authorities have ensured that security will be up to par. Now for what's new in the world of finance, we go to Jonathan Shander. Thanks, Maverick. This has been a fantastic week for the market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 580 points this week. The Dow Jones was up 91 points on Friday, closing the market at 17,823. The S&P 500 pushed into high territory on Friday, setting a new closing at 2,089. The S&P was up around 8 points on Friday. The Nasdaq was up 31 points on Friday. The Nasdaq was up around 177 points for the week, closing at 5,104 for this week of November. 
Making headlines this week was Abercrombie & Fitch. Abercrombie & Fitch shares jumped 25% on Friday after the company posted third quarter earnings results. Af Abercrombie & Fitch reported third quarter sales of $879 million, beating the forecast for $863 million. This shot the stock up around 25% after trading hours. This has been Jonathan Shander with the Finance Report. Back to you, Maverick. Thanks, Jonathan. Next, let's hear from Harrison Allen with the Politics Report. In politics this week, the Obama administration has announced that it will take its immigration battle all the way to the Supreme Court. The case brought forth by the Obama administration is against a coalition of 26 states led by Texas. The case comes after President Obama announced last November that he would create a new program called Deferred Action for Parents of American and Lawful Permanent Residents, also known as DAPA, that would be aimed at allowing some illegal immigrant parents to remain in the United States under temporary work permits. The 26 states argue that the president does not have the constitutional authority to rewrite immigration law, while the Obama administration argues that the federal government is the sole authority delegated by the Constitution to control immigration. It is likely that we will find out early in the new year whether or not the Supreme Court will take the case. On the campaign trail this week, Donald Trump's poll numbers rose this past week to 28 percent. A GOP super PAC for candidate John Kasich has announced it is planning to invest $2.5 million to dismantle Trump from the top of the polls. The announcement comes as concerns for Trump's potential nomination grow within the GOP establishment. The anti-Trump campaign will take place in New Hampshire, where the first primaries will take place this February. Thanks, Harrison. Now for the latest update in world news, we go to Michaela Amos. Welcome to ATV World News. I'm Michaela Amos. This week, the West African nation of Mali was struck by a terrorist attack at the Radisson Hotel in the nation's capital. At least 21 people were killed in the attack, including one American. Several jihadist groups have claimed responsibility for the attack. This week, hundreds of doctors from 44 countries called on the Republic of Ireland to relax the country's strict abortion laws. Right now, the act of providing or assisting in an abortion is punishable by up to 14 years in jail. The only exceptions under the law as it stands now are if continuing the pregnancy would result in the mother's death or if the mother is suicidal. McDonald's is causing controversy in China after their decision to open a restaurant in the former home of Chinese revolutionary Chiang Kai-shek's son, Chiang Ching Kuo, who was president of Taiwan from 1978 to 1988. One wing of the Hangzhou Villa has already been turned into a Starbucks. That's all for World News Today. Once again, I'm Michaela Amos. Thanks, Michaela. Two D.C. detectives were found Wednesday to have framed a man for murder in June 1981. Donald E. Gates was exonerated in 2009 after 27 years in prison. The two detectives were found to have fabricated Gates' confession and to have withheld evidence from him. The verdict opens up suspicions on detectives' actions in other cases. The district is now liable for, dam liable for damages. Students at Princeton University have led a movement to remove Woodrow Wilson's name from several buildings and programs on campus. Students are doing so because although Wilson led progressive initiatives in the early 20th century, he supported segregation at the time. The university administration has stated that they're open to working with the students moving forward and appreciate their ability to remain productive in light of race relations being such a topical issue. Next, Yukari at Nakayama will tell us what the weather will be like this week. This is Yukari Nakayama with your ATV News Weather Report. Weather is dropping as we are getting closer to the holidays. Winter Storm Bella has hit the northwest dropping 18 inches of snow in the Missouri Valley. Winter Storm Bella will slowly move upward towards Michigan, um, increasing snow inches in the upper Midwest. Now focusing on weather locally, temperatures will be dropping in D.C. starting Monday with a high of 46 and a low of 30. Temperatures will rise Tuesday through Friday with weather in the, in the 50s and in the 60s. Temperatures in the weekend will drop with a high of 46 and a low of 37. This has been Yukari Nakayama with your ATV News Weather Report. Thanks, Yukari. Now for the latest in campus news, we go to Emma Claire Martin with What's Up AU. Thanks, Adina. This week, AU celebrated K Spiritual Life Center's 50th anniversary. The building was one of the first intentionally interfaith spaces in the country, now home to over 25 full and part-time chaplains, representing the wide range of religious and non-religious beliefs of the student body. Before the celebration, there was an interfaith prayer vigil on the steps of K in light of the recent attacks in Beirut, Paris, and Baghdad. Campus religious leaders stood together in solidarity 
sharing words from their respective scriptures and prayers for justice, peace, and healing. Before we break for Thanksgiving, we start the week on Monday the 23rd with the Relay for Life Fall kickoff. There will be fun, food, and games on the quad from 1.30 to 5.30, as well as opportunities to learn more about the event and how you can participate. For students staying on campus over the break, please note that the library will be closed on the 26th and 27th and will close at 6 p.m. on Wednesday the 25th. All campus fitness centers will close on Thanksgiving and reopen on Monday, November 30th. This has been Emma Claire Martin with What's Up AU. Thanks, Emma Claire. So what are you doing for Thanksgiving? I'm going to be stuck in the dorms, but we're going to have a Friendsgiving on the floor. That's cool. What but about you? I'm heading home Tuesday. Oh, that's fun. I'm jealous, for sure. That's all for this week. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Maverick Ryan. And I'm Adina Marks. Thanks for watching ATV News.